my advice to clinical endocrinologists in particular and, and all physicians in general could be broken down into two parts. One part would be the socioeconomic piece and the other part would be about actual disease management and understanding disease. With respect to the socioeconomic piece, I don't view a lot of the changes that are occurring in the healthcare arena as exclusively negative. I view them as something that is natural for a, uh, a free society and a free market economy with limited dollars and, and some of the cyclic changes that we see. These are just challenges that are somewhat natural that we have to learn not only to adapt to but to preemptively make some adjustments in the way we practice medicine. They're not necessarily all bad. We need to be a little bit more efficient. We need to utilize technology better. We need to review the way that we practice medicine and the setting that we practice medicine. And of course, uh, American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists is, is also charged with some responsibility in helping out clinical endocrinologists together to try to address some of these challenges. I don't really know the, the quick answers to these problems. They're very complex problems. They're problems that have, have been around for a while. They're not gonna be undone immediately and so quickly, but, they, but psychologically, these problems don't have to be viewed as so negative. I, I think we, we view them within the context of trying to help people and trying to pull together to try to find solutions. With respect to disease, uh, it goes back to what I said before. I think we need to expand the way we view disease and view our patients when they come in, not just reacting to what they come in for that particular day. Of course, we need to address that chief complaint in their current active disease, but rather to also incorporate preventive medicine paradigms to look at an individual and whether we need to apply primordial prevention, they're at no risk for disease, but we still want to have a healthy lifestyle, or primary prevention, perhaps they're at slightly increased risk for a particular disease, and we have targeted preventive strategies, and there we apply lifestyle medicine. The challenge is that traditionally lifestyle medicine has not been part of our formal medical education. So what do we do? Well, part of the answer is, again, within our professional medical societies, we incorporate lifestyle medicine in continuing medical education. We try to get our, our centers of learning to start incorporating lifestyle medicine in formal education programs. And that way we can address nutrition, physical activity and physical fitness, issues with sleep, and probably other issues we're not even aware of that are part of lifestyle. And that way it's far more cost effective, has far less risk than taking medicines, but we're preventing disease, we're decreasing the number of people with active disease, and we're helping society as a whole.